I'm JD and what we're going to be doing today is basically covering the basics of function transformations. So let's start with vertical shifts. Vertical shifts are probably the easiest. If this is your f of x, and remember these uh, transformations are universal. So they apply to any basic function. So if I look at vertical shifts, and I shift it upwards, like I basically take each point and shift it up. Let's say I shift it up two units. This would be f of x plus two. If I take it, and let's say that I bring it down two units or three. Like so, and I start from f of x. Well, this new function is going to be f of x minus 3. And so uh, vertical shifts are very, very, very straightforward. Horizontal shifts, you almost have to put on your thinking caps a little bit. Let's say that I shift it left two units this whole entire graph. I shifted two units. If this is f of x, then this is going to be f of x uh, plus 2. It's going to be whatever the opposite, because it has to compensate because it wants to restore it back to the original. Because the y's are saying the same, right? So if I plug in negative 2, and here it would be 0, f of 0 is 0. You see that? That's how it's shifting. Now, if I do the other direction, shift it over uh, right one unit, That would be f of x minus 1. See that? So it's the opposite of what you think it's going to be, but it makes sense because it has to compensate for it. And that's what happens in other places as well. Uh, let's say that this is reflecting like that reflecting about the y-axis, sorry, the x-axis. If this is f of x, then this is negative f of x. So this is when it reflects off the x-axis. All the x's are staying the same, but the y's are changing from positive to negative. You see that? It's making the opposite. Now, if I want to reflect it about the y-axis, this is f of x, then this has to be, the x's are staying the same, but, sorry, the y's are staying the same, but the x's are changing from positive to negative, you know, just the opposite. That would make this f of negative x. Now let's say I have something like this right here, and I want to vertically stretch it like this. Vertically stretching it makes it look skinnier, so it's going to be on the inside, like that. Now this would be 2 f of x, if this is f of x. Notice that 2 is making it increase faster, so since it's increasing faster, it's getting skinnier. If it was slower, like a fraction, right, it's pushing it down. That's where the shrink comes involved, right? It's slowly, it's being compressed. So that would be like this. 
which would be something like one third f of x. Now, what if it's on the inside? If it's on the inside, f of x, and you have something like this, right? It's being, uh, it's shrinking. So since it's shrinking on the inside, it's going to be something like 2x. It's going to be, it's going to be larger than 1. Now, if, remember it has to compensate, if this is a fraction, it's actually going to end up being wider. Like that. So that would be f of negative 4 over x. And so that's stretching it out. And that would be uh, like 1 fourth, it would be between 0 and 1. So you can see by here that the stretches and the strengths are kind of hard to see. These, the vertical shifts and horizontal shifts, are very easy to see. You've got reflections by simply just a, a negative one either on the inside or the outside. If it's on the outside, that means the y's are changing, so it's going to be reflexive off the x-axis. On the inside, y's are staying the same, but the x's are being the opposite. It's going to be reflexive about the y-axis. Here, if you have a 2 on the inside, it's making it skinnier. It's increasing a lot faster than the original function. If it's 1 third, slowly. So it's going to be wider. Here, it has to do the opposite. If it's a 2 on the inside, it's whoosh, compressing it. It's shrinking it. If it's a fraction between 0 and 1, that means it's widening it out. And those are the basic transformations. And